Shannon and welcome to another occasional adventure. Thank you for joining me. So I've been wanting to do this vlog for a long time. Um, I have lived in Las Vegas the majority of my adult life and uh, most of that time I've worked in a hotel casino industry like a lot of people do and so I have a lot of insight and a lot of insider information um, just from my vast amount of knowledge and experience that I want to pass on to you. So if you have never traveled to Las Vegas before and you're planning on coming out or if you've maybe only been here once with friends and you're not really familiar with how everything works and some really important stuff that you will need to know about, this is the vlog for you. So, and at the end, if you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will definitely try to get back to you. Enjoy. So there's this amazing new invention. It's called the internet. Okay, that was sarcasm. Please use the internet. Use it, use it, use it. Use it as a tool because that's what it is. You need to do your research before you come to Las Vegas, first and foremost. You need to research room rates at various hotels. You need to research like the star rating because some people are very picky. You know, they want a four or five star or four or five diamond rated hotel. You've got to do your research. Do your research before you come to Vegas. Um, because a lot of the time room rates are really high even midweek and the reason for that is because well either it's a holiday but the main reason for that is because um, Las Vegas is a huge convention town a lot of people just don't know that you either have lots of conventions in town all at the same time which brings in tens of thousands of people no joke the only time it really um, kind of slows down with conventions, it doesn't ever stop completely. But when it really slows down is usually during um, like July and August um, because those are the hotter months and it's summertime and a lot of people are on vacation and so forth. So a lot of companies do not do conventions during that time. And then kind of mid-December, like right before Christmas, it's kind of slow as well. But otherwise, it is game on. Do not wait till the last minute. Do your research. Look at the layout of the strip look at the um, different reviews on the hotels look at what type of a room you're looking for you can look at room rates online as a matter of fact a lot of the hotels have lower room rates if you book online Ding. let's talk about fees now a lot of these hotels charge what they call a resort fee and they add that on top of the existing room reservation so if you're looking online read 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 and read some more you need to know what you're paying so you might see, oh, it's a great room rate at only $100 a night, but that could be before tax. Um, tax on hotel rooms in Las Vegas is 12%. And then you've got the resort fees. Resort fees aren't just for nothing. They do come with inclusions, like it'll cover the fee for your uh, Wi-Fi. It'll cover whatever the hotel says it covers. You want to read, read, read and find out. Um, but no, they're not negotiable. They are mandatory. So be prepared when you either uh, book online or call to book a room reservation you need to have that credit or debit card handy because you will be expected to pay a deposit oh and make sure you find out about terms and conditions for cancellation because hotels are very strict on those policies like so there's like no negotiating there's no bending if they're gonna you know if, if they say to cancel within a certain amount of time whatever it is 24 48 or 72 hours you better make sure you do that otherwise Bye bye money. And who wants to lose money? Well, some people do because they gamble a lot, but that's a different story. Now let's talk about restaurants. Keep in mind that um, if you go online or even call uh, the reservations department trying to get a table at one of the fine dining restaurants at the last minute, it's probably not going to happen at the time that you want. Okay? Just a warning. So again, in this case, book in advance. And a lot of people call and they have no idea where they want to eat. They just say, pick a restaurant. Okay, the agent on the phone cannot do that for you. Um, there are hundreds and hundreds of restaurants on the Las Vegas Strip. All different types of cuisine. All different types of prices. Anyway, the key to all this is book in advance. So I can tell you that the busiest times, if you're looking for not a buffet, buffet is a different anomaly. Buffets are busy all day, every day, but you're still going to have your peak times. And so peak times for dining as far as dinner is concerned, which that's kind of what most people are, end up looking for, is between uh, 7 and 9. But between 7 and 9, you are going to be hard pressed to find a table available if you wait till the last minute. Okay, so again, we're going back to the same theme here. 
Look online so you can look at the menus and peruse them. The fine dining restaurants have age restrictions. I've had people on the phone get very upset with me when I have to ask how many people are in the party, obviously because I have to know if we can book that table at the time that they want based on number of people in the party, so that's important. If you call and you have no idea how many people are in your party, we can't help you. So you need to know how many people are in your party, but also the agent you're speaking to might ask you how many children are in the party. This is because a lot of the restaurants um, have an age restriction. Now, my favorite subject, shows. Okay, I love shows. I love going to see a good show and having a great time. There are so many awesome shows in Las Vegas, but again, it comes back to doing your research. There's a great website out there that I highly recommend. It's called Vegas.com. Um, and Vegas.com, when you go on that website, um, you can click the tab that says shows. And the shows, they have it so nicely laid out. The shows are all filtered by whatever you're looking for. So there's Cirque du Soleil, there's magic shows, there's comedy clubs, there's musical tributes, variety shows, uh, you name it, it's there. Now, most shows have a set schedule, but of course, like everything else, life happens and sometimes um, the schedule changes a little bit. So, and of course, these performers sometimes take vacations. So let's take, for example, one of the more popular shows in town is O oh by Cirque du Soleil. Very well known, very popular. Well, every now and again, they'll deviate from their schedule and they'll have one additional day off. Or they'll have one day that um, somebody has bought out the showroom. Um, most of the shows have their schedules posted like for the entire year online. But if not, call the agents and ask. But again, it comes down to book in advance because a lot of these shows are extremely popular and they fill up very quickly they fill up months in advance okay for these shows there's no such thing as last minute pricing so a few things book in advance to get the seat that you want or to get a good seat second you always want to look online to get the layout google is a great place to go if you don't want to go on the hotel website go to google so a couple things you'll need to know for show tickets. Um, if you're looking at show ticket pricing online, keep in mind a lot of the things are going to say rates starting from. Um, of course, that means it's going to give you the base price only, no tax, no service fees included, just the base price on the lowest price ticket in the theater. Don't forget there's 9% live entertainment tax added to show tickets in Las Vegas, and then there's a service fee. The service fee that you pay for the show is a box office service fee. Yes, they always charge it. No, they don't waive it. So. Don't even ask because it's not going to happen. If you book your tickets directly through the hotel um, where the show is at, either online or over the phone, you're going to end up paying the whole thing all at once in one lump sum. Show ticket, tax and service fee. Keep in mind though, if you're booking through a third party, make sure you're reading the fine print. Like if you book show tickets through Vegas.com, before you press OK and, and give them your money, make sure you're reading the fine print and the terms and conditions because a lot of those third party companies will charge you the ticket price, like their ticket price, their discounted ticket price and the tax on it, but they won't charge you the service fee. They leave that up to the box office to charge you when you come to pick up your tickets. So just make sure that there's no unpleasant surprises and make sure you know about that before you make the purchase. And oh, children's pricing. Now, for a lot of the shows, there's only a few shows in town that are labeled as family friendly where they'll accept ages zero and up. Most shows have an age restriction of ages five and above, if they allow children at all. There's a few shows in town that don't allow children at all, like you have to be 18 or older. Um, so just make sure you're aware of that before you book the tickets. If you're booking online, read the terms and conditions. If you call and then try to cancel a show ticket, you're not gonna get all your money back. You might not get any money back, but if you do, it's not gonna be in full. And I'd hate for you to lose money on a show ticket that you're not even going to use because you didn't take time to read. So read everything. If there's any doubts, any questions, call and ask for sure. Uh, now, some of the shows offer children's prices, but it's only going to be if they, not all of them, but some of them offer children's prices. And when they do, it's only on specific price categories. So let's talk about bargains. Who doesn't love a good bargain? I love a good bargain. I love saving money. But what you need to know is that because Las Vegas is such like a corporate structure, um, you can't call up and just start haggling the price with an agent over the phone. It just doesn't, doesn't work that way. Um, think about it this way. When you go to a grocery store, drugstore, clothing store, you don't get up to the register and then just start haggling the price. Same thing in Las Vegas. Room rates, 
and show ticket rates and prices for dining are all non-negotiable. These are preset prices and the way it works is there's a whole team of people that's hired at each hotel or each corporation and that's their job. Their sole focus is to decide what are the prices going to be. Are they going to fluctuate and if so, when? And they, they preset the prices and they are non-negotiable. So, I mean, you again, let's all, let's all say the word together. Where do I want you to look? I want you to look where? Online. Use the internet. It's a tool. So when you look online, usually you're going to find your best hotel rates booking online. You're also going to find if that hotel is having any promotions, packages, or special deals is going to be online. And a lot of the time, in order to get that offer or get that rate, you have to book it online. But sometimes you can get that same package, same promotion, or same rate over the phone with an agent. But the other thing you always want to do is if that hotel has any sort of a, like a customer rewards program um, or membership program, it's always free. I've never heard of one that charges. So if it's free, like, you know, that saying, if it's free, it's for me, join the rewards program. That's going to be your biggest benefit to get the best prices and for everything. So happy savings. All right, so let's talk about traveling on the Las Vegas Strip. Now, Las Vegas Boulevard in and of itself starts out in Jean, Nevada, and it goes as far north as Nellis Air Force Base. I think it's about like maybe a 30 mile uh, span. But regardless of that, when we talk about the strip, we're just talking about kind of the main corridor area, which is about five miles long running from Mandalay Bay up to the stratosphere. So, I mean, certainly you can walk it if you want to, all on concrete and depending on the weather. Mm. Um, but there's a few modes of transportation to get around. So some people drive into town, so you've got your own car. Some people rent a car. That's fine. You really only need that if you're going to be going off the strip, taking maybe a day trip to um, like uh, Valley of Fire or Hoover Dam or Red Rock, which I highly recommend taking trips out to those. Amazing. But um, if you're just kind of staying on the strip, you don't really have to have a car. But here's your modes of transportation. A lot of people call and say, hey, is there a shuttle that just takes me from hotel to hotel? No, it does not exist here. It probably never will. So what you'll want to do is either use the bus system or Uber or Lyft or a taxi. Now, obviously, taxis are everywhere. They're at every hotel just sitting around waiting, or you can try to hail a cab when you're on the strip. Um, Uber and Lyft, I think most of us know how those work. If you don't, you'll want to uh, upload or download the apps for both onto your phone before you get to Vegas and then just tap and get your ride. Um, sometimes that's cheaper than a cab, and a lot of the times those cars are much cleaner than a taxi cab, just saying. Then there's the Citizens Area Transit, which is our bus system. Um, I don't know what the current rates are, so you'll just wanna Google search like Citizens Area Transit Las Vegas and find out what the single ride rates are. I think there's also a day pass a mul and a multi-day pass that you can purchase online as well. Again, look online, so that way you know. But those buses run up and down the strip 24-7. And they'll take you off the strip too if you're trying to go to Chinatown or something like that. So that's a good option. Um, yeah. And then there's also um, a monorail system in town. It's not free because it's owned by the city. Um, and it runs on the east side of the strip from MGM Grand up to the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center. And it makes, I think, a grand total of seven stops from beginning to end. So again, research online. I know that there's a single ride rate and a one day unlimited ride uh, pass that you can buy. And I think there's also a multi-day pass that you can buy as well. So that might be a good option if you're going up and down to the, um, the convention center if you're in town for that. And then there's a couple of free trams on the west side of the strip that just go between select hotels. And those trams are free because they're owned by those particular hotels. So there's a few ways to cut down on your walking with that. But one thing I really, 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 really want you to know Las Vegas is infamous for traffic lights. We have more traffic lights than any place I've ever seen, and I've lived all over the U.S. It's terrible. On and off the strip, terrible, terrible, terrible traffic. You're going to probably hit every red light unless you get really lucky, um, and you're probably going to sit through at least two, if not three or four light cycles before you get through to the next red light. So one thing, a word of caution, all the time I have people call me and say, oh my gosh, I'm going to be late for my dinner reservation or oh, I'm going to be late for the show. There's no need to be late if you give yourself exponentially large amounts of additional time, way more than you think you're going to need. 
um, for traveling from place to place on the strip because it's just awful, awful traffic always. So get there early, leave extra early. That's my word of caution.